Good morning, everybody. My name is Patty Atley, and I am from All Saints, and I kind of hijacked this. I don't know if it's skills. It's just fun. And um, <laughs> so that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Um, Martha talked to me earlier, was asking me some questions, and briefly, um, I started in being involved with flowers and everything when I was nine years old. My best friend, Sandra Lyon, and I were going to school, elementary school, and her parents owned a florist shop. And so I spent the night one night um, with her, and we went into the shop the next day, and her mother was doing some bows, and she said, Patty, would you like to learn how to do this? She was just being nice. And she showed me and I took to it immediately. And she said, wow, I've been trying to show San Sandra this for three years and she hasn't picked it up. And so it was kind of fun because as I got a little older or even right away, nine and a half on weekends, she would have me make bows for, for the shop. So I started early in bows. When we got to be maybe 10 to 12, that's when we started playing with flowers. My mother grew a lot of what we call now cut garden flowers, roses and hydrangeas and peonies and all of that kind of thing. So she taught me how to do flower arrangement where it looks like what you do. You go out to the garden, you pick the flowers and you put them in a vase and you bring them in the house. So that's how I did it until I went to Japan and then I um, learned Ikebana, um, Sizetsu school, Sizetsu school and love that and it was very simple it's what we call creative design now it's with fewer flowers and it's three to five and in Sagetsu school it's man earth man and sky so it's usually three and you can use branches I won't go into that that that's another thing but from there I came back and um, we came to Calvert County I guess in 1989 1990 somewhere in there and 88 and I met Vicki Trago and she said, come join us and work in the shop. So I worked with flowers then. Then she got me in the garden club with Mary Jane Hittinger and the story goes on. And now I'm a life judge in the Federated Garden Club, which is international. And there you have it. There's my whole life story with flowers. Okay, we're going to do a cornucopia centerpiece for Thanksgiving. Um, Another time I'll tell you the story about this. So I got some squash. Normally when I do a Thanksgiving cornucopia, I use carrots with tops. I use parsnips. I use um, red onion, yellow and red green pepper. Um, I'm missing something, some grapes, some apples. And I literally do a vegetable fruit cornucopia. And usually the cornucopia is about this big. This is a small one. And so we're gonna kind of fit these large <laughs> squash in here if I can. And I'm gonna show you once I get, get, get around, this is why I said I definitely need to, um, to get the camera behind me. And I'm gonna flip this. Or not. Got some Indian corn here. And I'm going to show you. So hang in there. You will get, get, get to see it here in a minute. Put some leaves in here because this is kind of bad. Okay, let me see what I can do here. I need some color since this one does not is not that. Let me see. This is yarrow, dried yarrow. And it comes out of the garden and you just hang it up and it dries beautifully. So we'll see if we can get some color.
Oh, I guess this is what I should say. The rules are, see, when you get older and you go to judges school and design, you learn there are rules. Always put the smallest item at the top. Always put the larger whatever it is at the bottom or on the bottom part of your design, if it's up or down or sideways. Those are rules. See, who knew? Except your eye usually shows you how to do that because it just doesn't look right. Okay. I think I, I put Nandina and yarrow and squash and I put some leaves here. So this is how it's looking now. Now, I am going to do this if I can so you can see it. I am putting a leaf here. I'm putting this kind of funny looking squash. I've never seen one quite a lot like it. I'm putting that here. And then I'm gonna put, I think my Indian corn right there. I can get it to stick. I'm going to put some leaves here. And this will go out. Now I have not enough. Okay, can you see that I'm doing extending it with leaves? Some of these leaves aren't showing because they're they're natural. Now, I didn't do this last night, I forgot. These are the most talented little pumpkins. You can just cut them with a knife just right around the center part and pull and the top comes off and a votive candle goes right in here. Um, I have gone ahead and put the votives in this, lit them, and I have done them down the table because with Thanksgiving, there's so many big dish um, plates and things and bowls on the table. You can't always do that. I don't know. I wonder if I could get weed in here. Maybe I can. Okay, um, I can't see if you, you can see. So how, how does that, does that look okay? Yeah, it looks great. Okay, so that's, that's, but then if you had, and I could do this, I could put another squash here and here. There you go. And so that's quick. That stuff you have around the house, especially if you have your bed vegetables and if you are doing a salad or using any of that paraphernalia of vegetables, just buy a little extra and put it in and then your whole dinner take, takes effect. Okay. okay. Now, why let's go over a few things. This is also nice to scoop out the top, put one of the little mini muffin pa papers in it, stick inside and put nuts or some sort of like eminent, something like that and then put the name on and use it as a play, place mark marker for Thanksgiving. Also for Thanksgiving, we have done a lot and I don't have any of the pretty leaves now, I didn't save them. If you find leaves when they're dropping and they're beautiful, dip them in floor wax and that can be anything. I always use Johnson. I don't even know if they're using Johnson anymore, but you use that especially for fruit like Williamsburg designs. So dip it in, but what we do is that sometimes we get a pretty leaf from the thing, from the yard. I put an acorn or two and just stick it on there. And then I write the name in gold and then you can lay it at the table. And surprisingly enough, they really look super when you have Thanksgiving is to have leaves with, with the, the names on them. So, okay, let me move this out. Now, this is a normal kitchen homemade variety cornucopia. And I may need you to help me. Kate. And this is the one I made. Yeah, if you can move that. And then I'll do this. Yeah, and it just lies. We'll just take it. 
And this is the one I made for you to put on the table if it's high class and fa fancy. And um, there's pine cones in it, high berries, um, Inca wheat or tassel flower, or there's a, ta uh, what's the strange one? Love lies bleeding, which I never was impressed with. Goldenrod, button um, mums, um, astromeria and um, pumpkin. Somebody is gonna win this today and take this home. So keep it alive, put ice cubes in it here at the top at night and put it out on the porch if it gets cold or in a cold down in the basement, you know, when, the, when it gets a snap to it and it will stay beautiful long past Thanksgiving. So here. Got it. Six, seven years, years ago, I did a luncheon and we had to come up with something. It was in October and we didn't want to, we didn't think we had time to do 35 or 40 because that's how many tables of eight there were going to be. And I said, well, it'd be nice to do a pumpkin. And, but I said, I don't want to cut <laughs> and clean out. 40 some odd pumpkins and do an arrangement. So we came up with this forever and ever ago. And we, so what happened is we put two, we put a smaller one here and a top one. So it'd be a lot like that at the luncheon table and then everybody took it home. And this is exactly for people who just wanna put some glitz on and don't wanna do anything. This is the easiest decoration in the world. You can use a drill, if you don't have a drill, you can use an ice pick or a skewer and make holes about an inch apart and make them alternate. So I usually do, do this, make the, the W, the completely W. So what I'm going to do is I did part of this because you don't want to sit here and see me doing this forever. And when I came down last night, I cut these because they were going to go in here. And Kip said, oh, what cute little arrangements. And I said, those are the flowers I need. So let me put these in. And uh, let me see. And you just slide them in. It's just fun, 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 and very easy. And I got a lot of these mums. Um, at Safeway and at Harris Teeter, and I just broke that with my nail. I'll have to replace it. Okay, let me put it out. But for those who just want instant, uh, th this is easy. Oh, let me see. And if it isn't as big as you want it to be, this is where the screwdriver, or the screwdriver, the ice pick comes in. And let's do west. And you just. Now, um, you can use Besides chrysanthemums, you can use all kinds of flowers, um, but chrysanthemums are very good to use for the one reason is they last forever out, out of water. And I don't do anything with this. I leave this in here, oh, three or four days, maybe even longer because the moisture in the pumpkin keeps them fresh and it's fun to, and then when I see that they're starting to look a little droopy, then I take them out and it's just flip, 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 put them in some water and, um, and leave them alone. And they're just fine, which is wonderful. And I have a little hole here, so I'm just going to do this. And I always pick pumpkins for the stems. They have to have personality. So I always try to get 
it's a rust one that'll work. But the drama and the traumas I was explaining earlier, I went to get some pumpkins the day after Thanksgiving, Sunday afternoon, and there were no pumpkins. So um, the lady that was down the street from church that I think it's Victoria's has, um, has plants, mums, and pumpkins and ve vegetables. So I went there on Monday because there was nobody there on Sunday and they were all gone. All the pumpkins were gone. So I had to run to Green Street to see if they had a pumpkin or two and they did, but I mean, <laughs> it was fun thinking, oh no, I don't have any pumpkins. All right, but so this is the least exciting stem I have. Let me see, I don't want green, here we go. And oh, I already have a hole that wonderful. So I don't know what, what you were doing it when we were doing it one night, because after you do these about 35, I don't know what we ended up with, I think maybe 38, you start to make, you know, you get tired. <laughs> I mean, it's easy, but just cutting the flowers. So there you go. So we started calling this ring around the pumpkin and no mess, no fuss. You don't have to clean the pumpkin. And the only thing you have to do is try to make sure you have a variety of mums. And I did not because I didn't order them. I mean, I tried to get as many different ones as I can. Yeah. Okay. Now that is one way of doing a pumpkin. The other way of doing a pumpkin is to cut it out, scoop it out. And here is what I did this time. Normally, I will do an arrangement without this. And I can show you this. I usually have it all flowers, but I ran out of flowers because of this one. So do you see what I did? I put an extra block of oasis in there and, and see my, my stem. And then you stick it in there and it's on top and it looks like it's busting out or busting through. So there it is, and you can use it any way you want. Um, I fixed it so you can go all the way around. It has um, gold, golden rod. Cheryl, you'll know that from salt marsh to seaside go, golden rod. Eucalyptus, ruscus, um, button mums, astromerias, as I told you, and millet, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite. This grows wild on the side of the road if you can find it and it gets, after it kind of turns, it gets seeds and it's really neat. It's one of my favorite things to work with in the fall. So there you go. And we'll have all of these to answer questions and to do all of that because I wanted to be able to see and I'm going by pretty quick. Hey, I am gonna have time. Thursday, I had my whole day, not my whole day, but a good portion of it, driving around the countryside after I went to get the, go to um, Columbia to get this, to find some bittersweet. And bittersweet is my all time favorite, favorite stuff. And there are vines that grow all over Calvert County. And we are very lucky because people in St. Mary come to Calvert County in garden clubs to get our bittersweet. So I usually always, have this and I take it through and it just makes it and I had another squash here I would have taken it this way but I didn't bring it so there it is so now now you see how, how it goes so then you have your vine your nan, nandina berries your wheat so you have to think of th Thanksgiving here at least a little bit now I'm going to show you how how to do this on a smaller scale I'm going to I'll leave, put this right here. Okay. See my stamps? I love stamps. Let me do this so I can I'll get this so I know the time here. Okay. So I'm showing you a small one of how I did that. Now the difference is I'm putting this on the end 
So you're going to have flowers. I haven't stuck him in yet, but you're going to have flowers here on the ends and then coming up and then going out. So that's it. And I'm not going to put him in until I'm done. So because I have blue and white in my house, I got some thistles, but they didn't have the buds in there. So I got some of that, that's blue, and some fern, and some bittersweet. And some hypopernum berries, if I can find it. Some goldenrod, if I need it. Some, oh, here they are. And some chrysanthemums. And let me see. Let's see what we can come up with. Oh. And to make the house smell good, some lavender. Because that'd go. Okay. So first I'm going to put Some bittersweet. I want it a little. Oh, let's see, maybe. I want to kind of stick it out here. Where's a little bit here? Yeah. Okay, and then you can kind of shape that down. And some hyperion berries, and you always strip out the greenery and you put them in. Lay this on here and put it here. And I have extra, you can use that. I know you all are sitting there. I do miss the comments, but yeah, we'll get it done. Okay. All righty. And I thought I had one other one, but we'll see. Now remember I said larger at the bottom. You wanna make sure you have enough stem to get into that water and keep it. Moist. I know I had another thing of, oh, here it is. I thought I had some already. Mm, I turning. And that's the other thing I do when I do flowers or when anyone does flowers is we try to get some that are um, curved, are that that you can shape down so it'll it'll look good however you want it to go and i'm looking for i would attach this lid but i can't find what i need to do it with
Okay, and let me see. Kev, I had, I'm trying to find, maybe, I think this. I, here, a skewer, a woman's best friend, especially with flower range. Oh, I think this is what I'm gonna do. Let me see if I can do that. Okay. All right. Oh, if you all want to ask questions and talk, you, you can. Sorry, I'm in here doing this. You expect me to know all this. Okay, then, Patty, I will ask some questions. Yes. yes. Um, when you said to dip the leaves in the floor wax to preserve them, mm -hmm. how do you, do you put them then on like a, um, a cooling rack to dry or what do you do? Okay, That's when I dip the leaves, when I put them in or with fruit, I usually will put a skewer in like oranges or squash or, you know, apples when we do with Williamsburg. I put the skewer in, I dip it in, I bring it out, I turn it this way and I let it drip onto a tray, a baking tray, something so that you can clean it. Oh, so you attach those leaves to a stick first. Well, no, not not with the leaves. With the leaves, let me see, what did I do? With or them? just hold it by the stem and yeah. dip it? I did dip them in because I'll have like a little cup or a little pan and I dip yep. the leaf in and bring it out. Okay. And then I let it drip a little bit and then I lay it on a drying rack, you know, like a co cookie sheet. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And thank it you. won't take long. And then sometimes I will just go and lay it, you know, out, outside on grass and it dries in a heartbeat. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. There we go now. Mm. So Patty, is the idea that you're taking long pieces of things like the bittersweet and putting those around the bottom? Well, yes, what I'm doing is I want it to look like, um, you know, like vine, so, so it's nat natural. So right. I'm doing it here because I'm gonna be going up here and then down with maybe some fern and stuff here. So I, with all design, even with the cornucopia, with the bittersweet, you want to be able to have your eye start at one end and walk your way and guide yourself through it. That's called rhythm when you get into the in, into the big school here. Okay. But it leads you through so the design is more active and it's three-dimensional. If mm -hmm. you have, if I would have not done this, if I would have stopped here and just kept it all the same height here, I mean, the same length, your eye would have naturally come and you would have kind of just stopped there. You mm -hmm. would have gone beyond and up to see the pumpkin lid or anything else or enjoy it. So it's it's a vehicle to let you your eyes travel through any design or anything you are working with. Okay. Then when Thank it you. comes up and then the eye, when I get up high, it'll go up and then you can follow on down the stem and go out. I mean, who knew that? But after I got to know about it, I thought, wow, that really does work. When Cheryl talked about that with container growing of flowers in bags, and he called it spillers, thrillers, and fillers. That's it, exactly, for all containing. Yes, exactly. So do you have, do you have a full picture of what you're going to do before you start? I have an idea. Let me tell you what I have discovered when doing designs when you're on a time limit and you have to do it. I'll have an instant picture of what I wanna to do to kind of go with the theme and, and to do a design. Then I'm sitting in here and Kip can tell you, and at night I'm doing this and, and I thought, well, this doesn't look good at all. 
Yeah. <laughs> so the mind is always better than, than, than the eye. And then I'll, then I take the whole thing apart and do it. I have a friend who, um, who is just delightful. She's, um, very, very good, good friend. She's a great designer, but she does her designs um, a month or two in advance. And she will get them and use silk flowers and, and put them together and work it and go in and let it sit for 24 hours. And she'll do this the whole time. So by the time she's got that design, she's got everything cut exactly the way, way she wants it. And she goes in and does it. I, I don't want to have the time nor the inclination, <laughs> because when I'm doing a design, I have to get the flowers fresh. And sometimes the flowers I may want to get aren't available. So I have to be able to kind of, you know, work that, that in my mind very, very quickly. But um, I just do it as, as I have time. And I really, um, I will decide. And then, and then if it doesn't work, doesn't work. I, um, I have all this stuff here and I will just make sure I continue to go on my way. But normally, no. Normally I'll say, oh, I think that's what I'm going to do. And then I do it. And, you know, and hope for the best. <laughs> now, did I have an idea here? Sort of. Um, am I married to it? Nah. But I just sort of ha had an idea how I wanted to do it. Now here you can see what what's starting to shape shape up to be. Oh, cool. I'm going to bring bring the flowers up, and so it really is going to look like. Um, in fact, I'm going to move this higher, but not now. Um, like you kind of open the pumpkin and it kind of spilled out. If that makes sense. On that really cool one where you said to put the ice cubes in the flowers to help yes. keep them fresh. Are yes. they in the, Are they in that excelsior or whatever that stuff is called? Are they in? They're in Oasis. They're in, that oasis. That's what. Mm -hmm. was, that's, yeah, that's fine. Okay. And um, and it is neat. It's a. Uh, now, um, the other thing is when you do this, and especially if it gets cooler, like um, 35, 37, 38, 39, I take them out and leave them overnight on the front porch, you know, or the screened-in porch now, and um, so it just keeps them crisp and um, fresh. And they will last my Christmas tree that I made, Kip, I guess I made it on the 15th, 14th of December. Kip threw it away in March, wasn't it? I mean, I'd mo moved it out and it was dry, but I did that. I kept putting the, um, the ice cubes on and then maybe, um, oh, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth day or something, I, I, um, Eh, maybe a week or two, I would go ahead and then take, I'd put it in the sink and then just run water over it. Okay, and let me see, I think. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. Patty, in this one, you started with the greens and then went to the color. Is that normally how you do, or do you start with the color and then go with the greens, or is it um, whatever? <laughs> I used to always green up, which I call when, when you start it. Like if I had this and I wanted like over here, I, I did do green up, and I'll bring that, bring that out and show you in a sec. Um, and then I just kind of scatter the greens around and then I nestle the flowers or um, the, the millet or the, um, the sedum. And then I kind of nestle them in the green so it fills it all out. Now I've gotten so I will maybe put in three pieces of green and then I put my flowers or whatever I want to put in there and then I accent with green. So I've kind of changed it. Um, and I think that's just because I got used to doing it, you know, doing, I mean, I knew more what I wanted to do and I knew how much space the um, flowers would take. And so I just kind of did it. And then I added the green to highlight it after I had put, put that in there. So the more you do this, <laughs> the more it changes. Now I'm starting to go up a little, little bit. 
in height. See, I started down and I'm kind of coming up. And in um, the most important thing is to make sure that your flowers or your evergreen or whatever you do have moisture. And when we do the Christmas stuff, I'll talk, talk to you about evergreen because that's just critical um, to make sure it gets at least enough of exposure in the root or the stem of the evergreen. Okay. Hey, Patty, this is Cheryl. Um, Hi, sweetie. Um, do you ever use wilt proof? Spray any of this stuff with wilt proof or no? Not? Um, I, I don't because I don't really need it as much. I mean, it, it everything stays fresh. Oh, I guess I should say from the very beginning, you know, every florist and even in the gross grocery store, they have those little packets of conditioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I put that in there. And the other thing I should say, and I forgot to even mention this, is that you want to make sure you condition your flowers. What does that mean? And that means you are going to cut flowers. Um, when you bring them home from the florist or you bring them home from a florist, cut off a little bit of the stems in an angle. I mean, you know, even if they're wrapped in cellophane, just I pull them up and just snip them and then put them in a condition. I have a black plastic container that's about th this tall that I empty the powder in first and then I add the water and I usually use um, warm tepid water because that will force some blooms to open more. Hmm. Um, spider. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Oh yes, I, I can lift that up. See, this is a spider mum and I had asked for small spider mums and I didn't get small, small spider mums this big but they come like this i leave them in this netting and then i put i cut this stem at an angle you can tell where i've done it and then i stick it in and then when i get ready i strip it all so they've been conditioned at least for 24 hours if not longer in this substance now if you don't have any of that powder you can use a tablespoon of bleach and I'm just trying to just went right out of my head. And you pour that in and mix it in the water and I'm thinking, what was it? Um, it it can't come to me a minute. And then that does the same pur purpose as, as that, that con conditioner. So see, see what's happening here? Can, can, can you tell? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. Okay. And let me do, and then I will probably finish up with this coming around here at the end in case I can't. And we'll do, and some fern. Um, this is another little whip in, here we go. I'm trying to decide if I want to put some more. I may do this. These, these are good. Ones. We'll see how well this works. Oh, and then, so anytime you get flowers, so say you just, you bought, bought some flowers at the gro grocery store and you came home and you, and you were gonna put it in a vase. Cut them a little bit, put them in your vase. Then um, when you see the water ne needs to be changed, it might be a little cloudy or whatever, then go ahead and rinse them, pull them out of the water, dump the water from the vase and then clip them a little bit again and put them back. Because what happens is with the substance within the stem, after it's been watered, it kind of liqu liquefies and it can seal it off. And so that's how come with roses, especially roses should be up to their neck in water. Um, and so you want to put them in a big, in a tall vase and put the water as high as you can. And roses will last forever if they are conditioned. And then each time you change the water, you just snip the bottom again in an angle and that allows them to draw up the, the moisture. Um, the other you put thing, more conditioner in then too, and you re no, well, just the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've I've got them where they're just about ready to do this. I'm going to see if I let me see. Let's try to jazz this up with some color here. Okay, I'll do this first. I am using not my clippers. 
that I, because I left it in the car, my little, my little one. I want to come up just right in here and reinforce this height, and then I'll start going back. Now, this is a new technique. I mean, a new technique for design as far as we're concerned. It's called grouping. Um, I um, hadn't done that for a while. I mean, I've sort of naturally done it, but not quite as much. I would have kind of spread them out a bit. Um, and we had a, a district thing. We had about 300 people, 300 women in a meeting um, in a, a luncheon and our election of officers, I think, and whatever. And so the judges, of which ju judges council said, well, let's go ahead and we'll do an, exa uh, an example because last year a whole bunch of new designs came in. And they said, we'll just go ahead and do the design. I mean, and so what happened is they were asking people to volunteer to do di different designs. So um, one of my favorite ladies, she said, Patty, I know you're, you're going to do one. What will you do too? And I said, <laughs> why? <laughs> she said, in case I can't get someone to do these designs. And I said, no, nah, you know. So she did, she came back and she said, nobody wants to do the grouping because it's one of the newest ones and nobody really knows what, what they, they want to do with them. So I said, oh, sure, I haven't done it. And I like to step out of my comfort zone. It must be the gambler or the, the imp in me or something. And so I went and I was visualizing jewel. I think it was something to do with crown jewels I, or, or something, Maryland, the jewel, something, I don't remember. But at any way, it had jewels. And I thought, OK, I am going to go get and I'm gonna say crown jewels, I'm gonna get a gold vase to rep represent the crown. And then I'm gonna get purple and lavender and burgundy and red and do all the colors of the jewels, amethyst and all that. And then I will group them. Well, I called up um, uh, my, my lady up at the, the um, at Potomac Florist where, where I go to get, get my flowers. Megan, and I said, okay, this is what I want. And she said, okay. And she said, oh, Patty, I don't know if we can get that. And I said, well, just let, let me know and I'll come up and get them. You know, I guess it was on Wednesday and I was doing it for Friday, but I wanted to condition them. And so I'm on my way and she called and she said, where are you? And I said, I'm about 45 minutes. Not, I wasn't even that, I was cl cl closer than that. And I said, um, I get the feeling things aren't right. <laughs> she said, they didn't come in and she said and what did come in you wouldn't do it you you wouldn't use them so i said well it's maryland i guess the jewel of the state or the jewel or something and i said okay here's what we're going to do i'm going to use a black base i want to have um red flowers i will i will spray bam bamboo for the height for the two sticks and i want yellow flowers and i don't remember i didn't go with calla lilies but I did all the colors of Maryland. I did red, yellow, and the black, and, the, and then white. And then what I did with the, with the leaves is that I folded them and tucked them so it looked like pearls of the flag and it was here on, on the side. And I had one of the judges, my mentor who's done everything, she's incredible from Delaware. She came up to me, she was a judge and she said, I had to mark, you were the only one I didn't take one point off of, but Patty, I cannot judge. I have to take off a mark. So what I did is I took off a mark because um, taller in one, one stick than, than, than the other. And I said, gosh, thanks, Dottie. <laughs> but she came up, she sent, sent me a letter afterwards and said, I just went to the International, they did it. I showed them a picture of your design. She said, Patty, your design was better than any of those. And this is why I told Kip, I need to get a shed to do these designs. And he said, yes, because when I do this, my kitchen is the pit until I clean it up. Usually I've gotten, so he goes on to bed and I stay and finish and then I clean up the kitchen. Oh, wait a minute. Where did I want to put this?
gosh, this is killing my scissors. So we're going to have to. Okay, do you see where I'm going here? It's going to swing. And can you see that? Not, not really. It's not going to show up. Let me do it shorter. Oh, we can see that. Okay. going to put another flower in there. So what do you think? I am. Oh, I think it's grand. Really yeah. cute. Well, it's kind of kind of perky. <laughs> yeah. It's good. I want bigger here. No wonder they charge so much for arrangements. I never, you know, I, I put flowers in a vase. Yeah. <laughs> I do too. And I do, I do use those little packets and all that, but I didn't know the thing about, um, change the water you didn't need to put more conditioner in yes and you, you don't ha have to but but you want to change the water you know every two or three just before it starts to get a color to it okay. because it, it's important to um it's important but also the most important thing it helps the flowers last longer so you don't feel like you've you know have an ar arm and a leg here okay now you can see this your eye travels up through here, comes up, hits the spike, comes back down, and I, I turned the fern, the the fern. Do you see how I got it curved th th this way? Mm -hmm. Okay, so your eye comes up, goes up, comes down, curves around, hits the stem, and goes on out. Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does. does. Yes. Yeah, it's and, really cute. And um, as I said. Who knew there were rules? <laughs> I liked it where I could just put it in, 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 a, in a vase and everything, but I have learned so much. I enjoy, I think what I'm gonna do is, let me look at this a sec. Oh, I got things caught in here we go. Okay, so, hey, we did that. Okay, ladies. And guy. And gentlemen. <laughs> Actually, I should should say my my boss. Okay, does that make sense? So pretty. Yeah, it yeah, really really is nice. nice. I, I have a question. Sure. Uh, now you used you know the traditional orange and kind of round pumpkin, but mm -hmm. I would assume that you could use others. You know, like the 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 squattier, flatter ones. Uh, yes. And also, there's some that I have on my display up here at our fall display in the yard that, that's a round pumpkin like that, but it's warty, has all these warts. Yes, you can use, yes, this one. Yeah, yes. something like that, yeah. Yeah, orange, I love those. And you know, the fairy tale um, pumpkins are my favorites. Yeah, like and, the Cinderella pumpkins? Yes, and, and I had one of those that I was going, going to use to do the flower arranging because it was going to be lower and kind of... Yeah. yeah, and I went out, and some creature had nibbled almost a whole section because oh. it is a very good uh -huh. cooking eating pumpkin. But well, there that there went that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I do like the squatty bottom things. But this I did because they hold the, the moisture real well. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing I was going to tell you is that when I do these, I get a clear. I just took that out. It was underneath the pumpkin. That's all right. Um. And then if it gets moist or anything, then it do doesn't get on a table or the floor or wherever you have it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are the clear kind of um, clear plastic plates, snack plates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I usually always put them uh, under it. Well, it's about the witching hour. Thank you. Was so that great. was really interesting. Yeah. Well, very, yeah. good. very good. Great, great job. You can do that. Um, if you can get up in the morning and get dressed, you can do design. Because <laughs> all it is is putting 
colors and textures together. And you all do that every morning when you get up and get dressed. So there is no really secret, although I hear about it all the time. They say, but Patty, you have the eye. You automatically th think of something you can do that. I don't really believe that. I just believe it's just playing with it and doing what you like. And if well, we'll send you pictures. Huh? <laughs> After we make one, we'll send you a picture. Oh, please do. I would love it. Okay, this is everybody's new in here. Oh, wait a minute. You have to pick it. Now, I will deliver this. This will be, you know, I will make sure that my hands are sanitized and everything when I pick it up, but I will bring it to your house. Thanksgiving corn cornucopia flower. And the winner is... Of course. <laughs> Martha. Oh, Martha, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Very nice. Hey, Ray, Ray. Martha. So, Martha, you have a thanks Christmas. We'll see about doing that, too. Yeah, I like to do it. Oh, Any thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. wonderful. Anytime. It's something I enjoy putzing with. Now, yeah. do you want... Now, oh, um, out on the porch, if you would bring me a brick of Oasis, it's out in the, in the box. I don't, uh, this I used a little more than half. Um, the bricks kind of have an indentation. Um, I, and, and you should always go up a minimum, a minimum of an inch and a half of whatever you're doing if you're doing a design. Because if you want to do at the top, um, oh, okay. oh, so it's raised up the oasis, yes. So yeah. if the container is this big, you want to go up an inch and a half. I like to go two inches. Here, that's what a brick looks like. And now, if you use half of it, I mean, if you soak all of it, it usually takes five to seven minutes and you wanna make sure it's covered, immersed in it. I have been known to, when, when I first do it, is to put something on top to force it down um, because the, the bubbles come up. You wanna make sure it's completely soaked because if not, when you cut into it to put it, you'll see a dry place in the middle. And that will enable you to have dead flowers sooner than, than you like. So I usually, I'll usually do it 10 minutes or so. I just want to make sure it's soaked all the way through. And so then, you soak it before you cook, you soak it before you cut it? Yes, because okay. you want it soaked, ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you can do it in pumpkins. As I said, you can do it in anything. Um, uh, another time, um, I'll have to do an Ikebana thing for you because you'll see how easy that, that is and you do that on small stuff. But Patty, Patty uh, yes. you, said, you, you indicated you need more uh, you need more corks. Uh, <clears throat> we have several, a lot of corks. They're in wine bottles in our basement. <laughs> I'd be very happy for us to start working Oh, on please. Them. I hate to ask you to do that, but if you could well, generate some more corks. Well, you you know, you and Kip are good friends and we'll sacrifice for you. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But yes, this is the thing that I was going to do for, for the ladies. And I, it's a box, it's a wooden box that I got from, the, that I was going to de decorate with corks all around the side. Well, it sits in the back of my truck, my truck, my van. And when I am taking vases and flower arrangements to Glen Burnie or Annapolis or Delaware or wherever I'm going. I set it in there and then I put some of the air pockets around it and it doesn't move. Is it time for me to say goodbye, Sawadi? Thank you very much. Thank you Coming so much. Yeah, this, this was so interesting. Thank you. It's so wonderful. Carol, thank you. Thanks thank very you. much. You're all very kind. Great.